Welcome to another edition of the Ballot Power Show. I am your host, Tijan Pa. This is the show that seeks to enhance the credibility of the constitutional review process. And with me to talk on this important issue is no other than Mr. Birangay. Mr. Birangay is a former political science student, now a seasoned political analyst. Uh, so, Mr. Gay, welcome, welcome to the Ballot Power Show. Thank you for having me, Tijan. Let's get to know you a bit more before we go into the conversation. Well, um, my name is Biran Gay. Mm, I studied political science at the University of the Gambia. Mm, I'm currently working with the Center for Research and Policy Development as a social researcher. And my focus is uh, electoral politics and democracy in the Gambia. Uh, which is very relevant to our conversation here. So, Mr. Gay, let's talk on the commission, the CRC. What's your view on the work of the commission? In your opinion, do you think they have uh, fulfilled their mandate? Yes, I think um, they have fulfilled their mandate because uh, when the change happened in 2016, uh, Gambian wanted change, um, a better alternative. So there was a renewed hope and um, part of this hope was to have a new constitution as uh, dictated by the people of the Gambia. Uh, they wanted um, to have a clean break from the, uh, from the past regime. Um, which we know was marked by um, so many political inconsistencies um, by former President Jame. So I think um, uh, drafting a new constitution and doing a nationwide consultation uh, was the right thing to do by the body that was appointed. And in my view, I think um, they have done justice to that in that regard of uh, producing um, new rule books uh, for the Gambia and some of the extensive work that they have done with the people of the country was excellent. Okay, so let's, let's, talking of the, 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 the draft itself, um, we'll talk about the, the voting process and the outcome. But first, uh, as a researcher and, uh, and a political analyst, you follow issues uh, frequently. So do you think the, the, the commission really um, consulted the consequent, uh, constituents um, in the process of, of, of drafting this new constitution? I think um, the idea of um, any constitution of a land is to get the views and opinions of the people, for which is very important because um, from a political perspective, it is the people that are going to be under those rules when they are enacted. Uh, consultation was done, in my view. Um, they have traveled to the length and breadth of the country, meeting with um, different communities, meeting with youths, you know, elders of um, villages and so on. So I think a widespread consultation um, was done uh, by the body and uh, in the language that was understood and accepted by, um, by every Gambian to have their input from the draft constitution. I think they are fairly executed their role in that regard of engaging the people um, to have their views reflected um, in the draft constitution. Okay, so the, the draft, they have done their work and they submitted the draft to the president uh, uh, coupled with a, a report. Then it was finally taken to the parliament for, for debate, review and, 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 and voting. So the, the, the MPs, the members of parliament, uh, voted against the draft going forward uh, for referendum. Um, it, it's, it's common knowledge that uh, the, the, the people are supposed to kind of have the final say in the whole process. Um, coming to the members of parliament, um, do you think the members of parliament themselves had that kind of consultation with the people that they represent? Not, uh, not um, necessarily. I think um, they have just done um, what they believe was right, which is uh, far from uh, what uh, their constituents would have wanted them to do, because this was a change that every Gambian was eyeing for. You know, um, in the aftermath of 2016, people were excited. Um, you know, they wanted a, a new political order in place, one that will resonate with their views and uh, opinions uh, when it matters. And I think the draft constitution um, was a reflection of that one. So I can say that uh, MPs have hijacked um, the political will of the people because their desire was to see a new constitution. That psychology of uh, having a new constitution and not uh, uh, really uh, being haunted by the authoritarian ghosts 
of Yaya Jame and his 1997 uh, uh, Republican Constitution, I think will have given people a renewed hope, you know, a more trust in the political system, which I think uh, uh, was um, uh, was being manipulated by members of MPs. And some of the justifications that um, that they give were utterly unacceptable. I mean, this will have gone to their constituency members and do a consultation, uh, maybe you know, conducted surveys or public opinions as to what exactly do they have to do because I think this is a very important process uh, for one man just to sit there in the parliament and um, decide you know for uh, on behalf of thousands of people which was not uh, justiciably done in my view and I think that um, uh, they have really uh, failed in that regard it was a political fiasco uh, a political fiasco so some observers will also say that the vote was influenced by the executive. Um, what's your take on this? Of course, I mean, uh, you cannot take the executive out of this. Um, when the CLC report was submitted to the executive, uh, first um, they were reluctant and uh, uh, believed that maybe the issue of time limit and the president was discriminated. So the objection of the executive um, created um, a home for those MPs because we, we need to understand uh, the power of incumbent uh, politics in Africa and how they can dictate and manipulate things. In my view, the objections of the executive at first uh, was a jeopardy in terms of um, affecting uh, the future progression of the draft constitution. So that's the beginning of failure itself as to why the draft constitution was rejected by some members of parliament and we know that some of it were just politically motivated yeah of course it's it's logical that if if the president felt that he was discriminated uh, he will try to influence in, in such a way that the the bill will not pass however there were also some misconceptions uh, around the whole debates you know when the when the draft was passed to parliament uh, one of them was the issue of gay marriage and the the order is the like we mentioned, the discrimination of person and also the issue of citizens, citizenship, which created a whole, whole debate in the whole process. So, what's your take on these issues um, as regards to how the vote was eventually rejected? On the issue of gay marriage, I think um, Gambians um, were very clear um, in rejecting that aspect, not only in the draft constitution, but um, from our customs and our values. Uh, the issue of the idea of gay rights being guaranteed in our constitution has never been um, invited um, to our public discussion. So people don't like it. And um, in the draft constitution, I think, if you have to compare it with the 1997 constitution, I think in my own view, the draft has even um, um, rejected uh, the, you know, that idea. That is of, the draft, um, right? Yeah, yeah, that is the draft constitution because it is uh, very specific indicating a man and a, well, you know, um, and a woman as uh, opposed to the 1997 constitution. So what matters is um, they're just subjected to interpretation and how people out there, especially those who do not uh, pretty much understand uh, some definitional aspect of the constitution may interpret it in a different way, especially those, um, you know, those politicians who may want to manipulate uh, the people, but I think there is nothing wrong with that. Uh, with that aspect, it was uh, blatantly rejected. Gambians don't want it, and I don't think it will make any point for the CLC to include something uh, that is not in line with. Uh, okay, Mr. With Gay, let's thinking. let's delve a little bit into this issue here. So let's do a, a, a comparative analysis of the two constitutions, that is, 1997 and the draft. In the in the 1997 constitution, it stated that all men and women of full age mm. and in this draft constitution mm. it's saying a man mm. and a woman mm. what's your interpretation how will you interpret this my interpretation you know it's very simple in the 1997 constitution if um, you know if i was a gay or if i'm a gay i can even say that uh, there is some aspect or some element that has given me room to interpret the constitution in my favor, in your favor because uh, those uh, those thinking um, were there 
in the 1997 constitution that it gives some degree of you know room it was uh, pretty much um, um, you know, um, ambiguous in terms of our interpretation and uh, but uh, comparing with the uh, with the draft constitution i think uh, it is uh, it is a uh, it is a little bit um, vivid um, very clear in terms of interpretation in that it is specific a man exactly. and a, a woman, woman as opposed to the as opposed to the 1997 constitution so we should even have more confidence mm -hmm. in this interpretation mm -hmm. than in that of the nine so what will you say to suggest on that uh, uh, some of these uh, commentators or some of the players had an, had an agenda you know to mislead the public what will you say to that you know, this is um, politics. Uh, you know, uh, in Africa, uh, what we observe is politics of confusion. I mean, uh, uh, whatever works for you, um, that is ideal to them in their own um, um, uh, in their own eyes. That's why we live in a very tricky situation in terms of uh, defining who we are as a people and what type of political consciousness. Uh, do we ought to put out there? In Gambia, I think that's the problem. We don't have an agreement as to what is the ideal political norm to practice. And exactly. you have others out there who have their own agenda of political manipulation on their own, you know, uh, selfish interests. Okay, which, let's, is, uh, which let's, is not what the Republic wants. Let's, let's talk about citizenship. What's your take on this issue of citizenship also? Because it was also a very, very contested issue. Yeah, my views on citizenship has always been the same. I I, I supported uh, those clauses uh, in the draft uh, in the draft constitution. I believe that um, uh, there are so many problems in the Gambia today uh, that are far more important. When you think of the number of people unemployed in this country, when you think of uh, the number of uh, uh, you know the development of real estate agencies land is becoming a problem mm -hmm. in urban um, in urban gambia and making citizenship open for me uh, it's not the right time for the country right now because we have um, so more important issues to deal with and um, if anybody feels like you want to be a gambian i think uh, there are other procedures that you can follow uh, to become a citizen uh, um, you know to become a citizen of the gambia so in that um, in that regard i completely support uh, what the draft entails okay so moving forward there are also very um, progressive clauses in this in the draft constitution some will say far more progressive than the 1997 constitution so i want us to talk on some of the issues like you are youth um, what's your view on youth representation women representation you know uh, the, the, the quote has given to people with disabilities, we understand that women in this new draft will have at least 14 seats in the in, 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 in assembly. What's your view on some of this uh, you know, progressive on, nature um, of, the, um, of the draft? It is a progressive constitution um, in that aspect. But um, I think youths of this country should take up uh, responsibilities. Uh, because uh, our hopes sometimes have been shattered um, by the oligopoly, that is uh, the political, um, those are the echelon of politics in the country. But we have to take responsibility that uh, the demise of the draft constitution was orchestrated majorly by our youth parliamentarians. I mean, uh, interesting. Yeah, yeah, interesting. yeah. So um, we have to, you know, we have to take cognizance of that one. Um, at, at, at one point, um, we as a youth, we want to move, and in another part, there are a group of uh, young people who just they are to be dictated mm -hmm. um, by the oligopoly, and uh, which um, which will not be. So, um, the, from a generic perspective, I think uh, we should encapsulate our visions as young people um, and move, um, um, you know, and move ahead, and you know, try to reject this sort of inconsistencies affecting us. So, I believe that, um, in as much as it is there in the constitution, um, you know, it is the right thing to do. You should participate, but we should also participate reasonably. Mm. That is what I believe. Mm. So, and in the areas of um, women and so on, of course, um, any country that is developing today. Uh, it's because of uh, women are the, yeah. you know, um, women are the forefront of things. You look at South Africa, you look at um, um, our neighbors here. Uh, women parliamentarians are equivalent almost with men. So when you want to, and, and bring if about you look at Rwanda also, yes, we want you can say so. that the majority of members of parliament are women. Exactly. So and they are doing extremely well. You know, women, to develop women, women, women are the leaders, and they are even great. Uh, they are even great thinkers, and I am even exactly. thinking that. If we give them a chance or more opportunities should be provided for them, it's not that we should. They have to. 
you know, this will get the opportunity to participate um, in the political processes. We could make our country, you know, better because of uh, uh, they have a very good uh, thinking nature, and you know, their visions are just um, outstanding. And I believe if we nurture that as a country, we can forge ahead and achieve what is best mm -hmm. for us. So there, there are also very progressive clauses uh, for people with disabilities, and you know, they they are well represented, like in decision making like in, in, in parliament. What's your take on that? I think uh, this would be in the draft constitution that is ideal. I mean I personally would have rejected the draft constitution if the issue of uh, uh, people that are differently able was not vehemently captured and I think it should be captured. Every Gambian irrespective of who you are you should be able to realize um, your talent, your potential and uh, you should be giving the chance to contribute to national development. We are old Gambians, exactly. you know, just that uh, these are natural events that can happen to, to anybody. Anyone. So yes. I think we should be um, um, futuristic in terms of how we view these issues and understand that uh, as a country, we have to be super inclusive in exactly. all regards. Yeah, and the uh, observers will always say that this uh, uh, draft is very inclusive and all very 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 forward looking so now moving forward um, you are an expert to say in, in electoral issues mm. now next year we we have election uh, is in 2021 and there is a process uh, so let's look at moving forward now um, what, what's your view on how do we move forward now as regard to the draft constitution and the way forward in your view, do we bring back the 1997 constitution since the draft has been rejected now or suspended or do we still bring back the draft and what are the mechanisms going forward? I think um, if I was opportune to, um, to go to heaven, mm -hmm. the thinking is you will always remain in heaven. Mm -hmm. A person in health mm -hmm. or a person from health, you're asking him to go back to health, um, you're not making justice to the person. I think going back to the 1997 constitution is going back to misfortune, um, you know, politics of agony, politics of deceit, you know, totalitarianism. Mm -hmm. um, we do not uh, want that to happen. And the chances of, of that happening are very high. So we have to forge ahead and continue with the reforms. The, uh, the draft constitution was, uh, was the best sort that uh, we have in terms of um, orchestrating um, a new political order in the Gambia, one that will be um, um, will be ideal uh, for every Gambian, one that um, um, every person, irrespective of wherever you are, will reflect or resonate with your thoughts and thinking in terms of um, having hope uh, for a better Gambia. That's the only way forward. I mean, forging ahead, the 1997 constitution is really not an option for us because you still have the uh, draconian media laws, you know, um, sometimes freedom of expression have been curtailed uh, by the state. So we cannot give that opportunity to the state, um, you know, uh, to use the 1997 constitutions as a, you know, as a weapon of a political appliculation. Uh, we, cannot, uh, we cannot afford that. We have to move ahead and whether it is the draft constitution which is still in limbo, I don't know. But moving forward, is to go ahead with the reforms and uh, accept what majority of Gambians want. Exactly, accepting what majority of Gambians want. Mr. Guy, uh, we are running out of time, unfortunately. I know we have a lot to say on this here. But finally, what, what will be your, what will you have for the people? What will you say to the people out there, to, to, to the Gambian people, to our MPs, to people in, in civil society, to all stakeholders involved in the process? What will you say to them? Yeah, um, I, I just, I just wanted to talk about a little thing uh, concerning um, um, the time limit, um, uh, you know, um, if you can permit me. Of because course, uh, I think um, what the CRC have done was exceptional mm -hmm. and surveys that we have conducted with IRI have supported that, mm -hmm. that Gambians wanted a presidential term limit. Mm -hmm. You have to do a comparative analysis mm -hmm. as to what is, what is happening in Africa. Mm -hmm. Look at in Guinea, mm -hmm. um, Alpha Conde, mm -hmm. you know, um, is running for a third term, which is highly controversial. Mm -hmm. uh, Alassane Water of Africos mm -hmm. is also doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. But for the fact that Gambians were consulted in this regard, mm -hmm. and they have addressed it in the draft constitution, mm -hmm. maybe in the future, we will have not faced 
you know, if the president attempted to go for a controversial tatam because it was already at risk. I think they have done a tremendous job there in terms of, um, you know, of denying the executive thinking along that, um, um, you know, thinking along that line. Uh, and my final words will be, there should be a political will. Mm -hmm. Because I think the reason why this draft constitution was rejected was there was no a political will. I mean, Gambians were only after change. But when the change happened, we're seeing a return of the old order, you know, the return of the old political system, which is not helping us forward. We have to move forward as a nation and, you know, try to bring unity in terms of reaching a general consciousness as to how our country should be governed. Exactly. Um, thank you so much, Mr. Biranget, mm -hmm. for coming on the Ballot Power Show. I've been your host, Yanba. Mm -hmm. Until we come again next time. Bye.